Now, in addition to extruding an object, there is another common practice when you're working with 3D, and that's called revolving, or in if you're heavy into 3D applications, it's, uh, it's also called lathing. And it's essentially a way of creating rounded objects, things like glasses or anything that's kind of round, got a round shape to it, you can do it by revolving it or, or lathing it in the program. Now, in programs like Maya and 3D Max, there's obvious revolve and lathing features. And I'm just going to say revolve. You can say revolve or lathing. Everybody's got a different way of, uh, of interpreting it. I just call it revolving. But um, some of those 3D applications actually have obvious features for doing that. And in Photoshop, you can do it. It's not an obvious feature, though. It's kind of you kind of got to be shown how to do it because otherwise you're just going to pull your hair out trying to figure it out. So the best example, of course, is uh, let's just go ahead and do a uh, kind of a wine glass type thing. This just kind of best illustrate this. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new blank layer, and using my pen tool, I'm just going to draw half. You have to imagine for a second if you're looking at a wine glass, and let's say you cut it in half right down the middle. So you would see a profile of that shape. Well, then cut that in half again, and you're only going to see half of a half, basically. And what I mean is we just need to see half a cutaway of the glass in order to create our evolved object. So, so I'm going to go and start with uh, the bottom here and make a path. I'm just going to hold the shift key down and draw over here. And just draw a curved path here. And we'll just bring this up here like that. And then we'll just kind of give it a little bit of a curve here. It's looking more like a chalice than it is a wine glass, but that's okay. Now I don't want to come over all the way over here because I need it to be cut out so it appears as though it, ac it could actually hold something. So I'm just going to bring it the shape around here this way and then go ahead and close it out down here. So as I said, you can imagine this is like the cutaway of a half of a glass looking at the profile cutaway of it basically. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this layer with a, a base 50% gray. I haven't mentioned this yet, but I tend to build my objects in gray colors and then I apply the colors or textures later once I have the object in place. So I've got my gray filled layer, I've got my path created. I'm gonna go into the 3D menu and go ahead and choose 3D extrusion from selected path. And in my 3D panel I can see, let me go ahead and turn on my ground plane so we can actually uh, get a better idea of where we're at in the 3D space here, there we go. And I can just rotate this around, you can see it's extruded this element. And it's casting a shadow on the ground plane and that's fine. But the extrusion, if I just increase it or decrease the extrusion, it's only going to go on that one axis, forwards or backwards. So in order to rotate it or revolve it, I'm going to need to go into that second tab here in the Properties panel where those uh, twist and taper features were. And down here we have the horizontal angle. And right now it's default set to bend, which is exactly what we want it to be. And I'm just going to take this and move this into the negative sliding it to the left and notice what's happening to my image here. It's wrapping itself around on that axis until it meets that other end. Now you'll notice that the axis, the center axis rotating point is the center of the graphic, which is like right here in the middle. That can be changed by going in here into the, uh, the deformation axis right here, these little, this little grid anchor points, and I'm gonna position the anchor to the left side, which is this flat side of the glass, and it'll make it a little bit bigger. So again, let's wrap this around. And because that anchor points on the inside area, now we're seeing the glass much wider. And there we can see we have formed, we have revolved our shape. Now, notice there's a hole in the middle of it. If this were a real glass, then anything you pour in here is just gonna fall right out. So let's go ahead and back into that layer one and just decrease that extrusion depth a little bit. And that will go ahead and close out the hole there. And now we have a nicely revolved object sitting on our ground plane. So this is the way you would create rounded objects like this, things like glasses or anything that needs that kind of shape. And once you're aware of extrusions and revolving, you can look at an object and get a good idea of what it's going to take to recreate it. Whether revolving or extruding is going to be a good idea is really going to be determined um, on what it is you're trying to create. But you can see that revolving um, is relatively simple. Again, it's one of those kind of hidden things. So you just want to make sure that you have your object selected. You're in that deform section. And it's just a merely a matter of moving that horizontal slider with the bend option selected to revolve it around and close out the shape. Now just to kind of show you another really quick thing, this uh, desktop image that you see right here, you can see it's made of these kind of carbon fiber rings that I've created. 
was done that exact same way using an extruded and then revolved object. All I did was I took that same ellipse tool and just drew a shape on one side of my image. I'll go ahead and give out a, a base 50% gray and then go to 3D, new 3D extrusion from selected path. And if I just change my angle here, I can see there, I'm gonna go ahead and, and extend the extrusion all the way around. So I'm gonna just go in here into the deform section and just take this horizontal angle once again. I'm just, this time I'm gonna go into the positive and notice what happens that I drag it to the right, it brings it around, bends it, and eventually it's gonna close in the shape. Boom. And there I have the ring I need. And all it's, all it's merely a matter of now is adding the carbon fiber textures and the lighting, which we're going to talk about a little bit later, and then I just took that same layer, created a duplicate, and then merged them together. In fact, I'll just show you real quick. If I make a duplicate layer here, and let's just rotate this, modify that. I'm going to select both layers, and we're going to talk about merging layers a little bit more in depth, but just to show you real quick, 3D, merge 3D layers. Now those objects are merged together in a single 3D layer, but if I select one individual one and just move it, there you can see I get the interlocking rings just like I created for that desktop image. And it's in there. now it's just merely a matter of adding those textures, modifying the lighting properties, and doing a render, and ultimately getting a pretty convincing object in there. So pretty impressive ways of revolving objects, getting pretty creative with different uh, just revolving simple shapes you can get pretty creative with and just going in there and modifying and uh, revolving text. Just try different things and you're going to see different results pop up and things you may not have thought of are going to give you some good ideas as you go. Now in the next lesson we're going to talk about what I just did and that is merging 3D objects. There's going to be scenarios where you want two objects to really interact with each other in a, uh, certain ways, whether it's uh, casting shadows or even reflections and such, you're gonna want those to interact and they need to be merged in order to do that. And there are some things you definitely need to know when it comes to merging in 3D here in Photoshop. So let's take a look at that in the next lesson.